Dave Arthur, drop it. Come on, get up. Let's go. Let's go. Sit down, Junior. Drink your Shirley Temple. Don't you talk to him like that. I said sit down. You better start coming up with a story we can believe. Look, I didn't kill those two guys. Uh, your husband's been shot. He's dead. Why don't you just tell me that you were just doing your job? Some job. Yeah, Joe. Two dead. One here, one on the other side. Who is he, Joe? Henry Caffey. He's doing on the shift that's working now. Lady, you could look at that. My wife turns green if she sees a fever blister. He's the guy who found this body, and the responding officers found the other one. I was reporting into work, see? I thought Henry was uh, looking under the seat for something. Well, like I told the officer, I didn't see anybody or anything. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. That's the I'm consensus sorry. so far. Nobody saw anything that we could use. I'll tell you what I got. I got three shells. Two over there and one around the other side. 303 Enfield. That's great. They're about as common as an empty beer can. This is Anthony Cardulo, 42 years old. Will you tell me, at this point in my life, why 
I still find it crummy that a man can be blown away while he's changing his shoes. Cardulo and Kathy work the same shift? That's what I was told. Who's in charge here? Guy by the name of Nicastro. He's inside. Henry Kathy wasn't friends with anybody. Remember Henry, the guy in the comics? Cue ball head and he never spoke? That was Henry Kathy. The guys used to say that. But they liked him, though. Sure. Cardulo, too, for all his faults. What do you mean, what faults? Well, faults, that's too strong. <laughs> Benny is the class clown. There's one everywhere. You know the type. Look, would you like some soda? We make some good stuff. There's a ginger ale, cola, tropical punch. Take some home. No, thanks. Uh... Listen, guys like that often get themselves into scrapes. What about Cardulo? Do you ever get any fights or anything like that? Sure. Every other week. But he would kiss and make up very fast. That was Benny. It was a Pontiac. I never saw it before. But it was a Pontiac. Well, maybe... A Merc? About, about 67. Color? It was light, but dirty. Hey, I didn't have no eyes for the license. You know how it is. Anything else? Yeah, had a vinyl roof, raggedy and torn. Yeah, well, I guess I can put together an APB on all that, huh? Okay, uh, we'll be in touch with you guys. Okay. See you. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> Cardulo had a family out in the valley. I heard you. I heard you. Let's check out this shop steward, Charlie Gans. Okay. Benny, I'm with the police department. I'm Sergeant Anderson. May I come in? Yes, just a moment. Are you Mrs. Cardulo? Yes. Yeah. May I? Please. Maybe you'd like to sit down also. I have something to tell you. Uh, your husband's been shot. He's dead. I'm very, very sorry. Uh, who, who do I call? I mean, should I call the funeral parlor or, uh, or his sister? What, what, do, what do I do? I can do some of that if you like. Um, where, where did it happen? At work. They got what they wanted, didn't they? They got what they wanted. What? <laughs> well, if Benny Cardillo's forklift almost ran him down, it was probably his own fault. He's a klutz. You weren't riding him about the strike that's coming. You weren't teed off because he was talking it down? Teed off? Yeah, sure. Who messed with the brake on the, the forklift? Who broke his windshield? Who put the smoke bombs in his car? Well, this is the first time hearing of it. Well, now that you're hearing of it. Well, I, I think it's terrible. Mr. Gantz, your term as shop steward's been pretty bumpy. For example, here, during the 68 strike, two workers said that you convinced them to beat a pro-management man into a wheelchair. The official charges never stuck against me, did they? They just misunderstood something I said, and then they went out and, and did a dumb thing. Uh, maybe last night, uh... Somebody misunderstood something else you said. I don't badmouth people or start trouble, even for Benny Cardulo. Kind of misunderstanding where two men get shot? No, miss. Why did Cardulo tell his wife that you were bringing a lot of heat down on her? Beats me. Look, uh, can I go? We have got a strike vote coming up. No. Anderson here. Okay, thanks. His alibi checks out. You're damn right it checks out. Mr. Gantz.
You can go. Intimidates yeah. everybody. He's the kind of guy that you're wishing okay, on. Okay, George, relax. Me. This is Pepper Anderson, George Nellis. He's uh, chief of security. Yeah. Well, here's the rest of your packet and all of our guys who didn't punch into work last night. Hey, good. Joe and Pete can take care of this hat. Oh, all right. Pepper and I'll handle these. Hello, uh, Crowley. Now, this kid's Stuart Borchers. He was yeah. only on for the summer. He quit last week. Now, he had a final paycheck coming, and last night was taken. He didn't show up. Pete, you want to handle it? All right. Mrs. Borchers? Yeah? We're from the police. May we come in? Please do. You found Stuart. What's happened? No. We haven't located him yet, but we're trying to. You have a painter in the family, huh? Stuart. I always wanted to paint. This one here I find very interesting. Very nice. He won a prize for that. High school is junior year. It's called Cold Wind. I think that's a very good title for a painting, don't you? Absolutely. Miss Borches, you told the uh, Orange Grove Sheriff Department that your son drives your old car? 1965 Pontiac, light brown, PCE 107 license plate. Oh, Stuart complains so about that car. I tell him I'm not Princess Grace. <laughs> well, is there anything about the car that uh, might stand out? You know, like uh, maybe a busted windshield or headlight? No, no. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't pay much attention to that sort of thing. It's perfectly satisfactory transportation for a boy of 18. Better than I had at that age. Would you like some coffee? Mort may have forgotten to punch his card, but he went to work. How do you know that, Mrs. Barker? Because he had his lunchbox, had his work clothes on. Then this morning he talked about the job. He said he pulled his back out last night. Yeah, well, did he tell you the two men had been shot to death? No. No, he didn't. Let's see that mugshot again. That girl with the glasses. Yeah. You Morton Parker? Oh, I'm supposed to know you. No, see, we know you from your police record. That was a year ago. What about it? Mr. Barker, uh, you told your wife you went to work last night. Uh, you didn't. Why is that? Why is that, Mr. Barker? Two weeks ago, according to your personnel record, you and Benny Cardulo went at each other in the men's room. What's that all about? Benny was washing his hands, took off his watch. There's a hole in the plaster above the sink. My elbow hit his watch by accident. Got stuck down behind the wall. So he hit you? I, you know, he kind of shoved me. I shoved him. Mr. Barker, I can only repeat, I don't feel you should say anymore. Look, I want to get this all over with. I want to go home. Look, I don't know what the personal problems are between you and your wife, but she's going to find out all about this anyway, sooner or later. Maybe not. Maybe not. If they let me go soon, I can make up a story. The boat was late. We'd like to see you get home quickly, too. Sergeant Crowley, my client does not own the kind of car you're after. Now, that's documented. I don't see why he's still sitting here. Yeah, well, in April of 74, he was busted for assault and carrying a concealed weapon. That's documented, too. Doesn't apply, and you know it. 
Look, I get excited sometimes. That's why I ran away from you. All right, I had some problems in 74, but that's all straightened out now. Your uh, problems with Benny Cardulo went beyond swearing and shoving, didn't it? Uh, the company records show that you had to be taken to a doctor. Your vision was blurred. Okay, look. Look, I didn't go drinking by myself last night. I did. I lied about that. See, I used to be very heavy into gambling. My wife left me for a while. I was in debt to very crazy people. These are animals. That's how come I got caught with that gun last year. I even, I even beat up on a guy. I thought he was after me. It turned out he was a druggist from Wilton Park. Anyway, I kicked gambling through Gamblers Anonymous. I met this guy there, Arthur Morris. So I'm leaving for work last night. He calls me up. He says, look, I'm in a card game in this hotel. I want to break away, but I need your moral support. So I go over there. And 20 lousy minutes later, I'm in the game. Who are the other people there? I don't know, it's three guys. I never met them. Okay. <clears throat> we'll have to check all that out. But I'm afraid you're gonna have to stay here in the meantime, Mr. Barker. Yeah, and it's all gonna come out! And I'm always gonna leave me. Where do we find this Arthur Morris? I won't surround him. You still live in the Mr. Barker, okay. did Charlie Gans, your shop steward, suggest that you knock Cardulo's watch behind the sink because Cardulo was anti strike? Look, I told you it was an accident! Can I see us have Just got a call from Mrs. Borchers. Son called her from somewhere up north. He's headed home for the start of college. Las Brisas, that's that uh, new school. It's practically in the backyard. One of the reasons why nobody can find him was that car of his. What does that mean? Well, that broke down. And he was hitchhiking. Bring him in. You got it. Styles. I'm going to have to ask you to come downtown with me. Well, Bruce, it's only in session two days right. and the first bust is going You're down. the right to remain silent. What's the big deal about not picking up a paycheck? I knew I could get it any time. I just wanted to squeeze in a trip before school started. So you just up and leave without telling anybody? How do you come up? You're late. Yeah. Is that how you do things, I know. My mother worries. She asks a million questions. I never would have gotten on the road. You're okay. What were your problems with Benny Cardulo and Henry Caffey? I had no problems with them. Come on. Everybody had problems with them. They told us that the plan is always on your back. It's a lie. Look, son. I don't usually advise a person one way or the other. You understand? It's not my job. Are you sure you don't want an attorney? What for? I mean, that just wasn't my car that night. What else could a lawyer tell me to say? From what I've seen in books and movies, you seem pretty professional to me. I don't think any of my rights have been abridged. Yeah, all right, well, uh, how did things go for you over at Valiant? I mean, like the job. It was okay. Like soda, it's okay. <laughs> I often find my life suits me quite admirably. That's a quote from Le Vent Foy. That's French for The Cold Wind by uh, Marcel Baudelaire. Do you ever read it? No. And it's me asking the questions, OK? Uh, 
Now, those two men were shot with a British Enfield. Do you have a British Enfield? That's a rifle, right? It's a rifle, right. No, I haven't fired a rifle since YMCA camp. 22s. Let me tell you something. Your car fits the description like a glove, you understand? Now, we're going to continue to ask all the gun shops who bought a British Enfield. And sooner or later, we're going to find out who bought it. You understand that? Wasn't I. Well, buddy boy, you think about it tonight in jail, okay? Because my opinion is your story ain't worth a damn. Well, that guy's really something else. I don't think he ever blinks. They're hauling the car down from Ventura. That should push things along. It's costing us enough. Those calls you had me make? Yeah. I found Arthur Morris' sister. She thinks, just thinks, Morris might have gone to Honolulu after a job. Well, Mort Barker's story isn't improving with age, is it? No. Of course, if it becomes necessary to fly to Hawaii to find this guy, I guess I'll just have to handle it. You would, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd go alone, wouldn't you? Well, your life right here often suits you admirably, don't you find? Okay, Sam, thanks. You want to wing another story for us? We get paid to listen. What do you mean? I told you the whole truth. Didn't you find Arthur Morris? What's the problem? Yeah, well, I tell you what we did do. We burned up a lot of shoe leather and a lot of the city's gasoline. And we're getting tired of it. Did you check the places where he works? Mm-hmm. We did all that. He's not around. In fact, he hasn't been around for a long time, and I think you knew that. No. No. We can play the piano sometimes, you know, in bars, lounges. You told us that. Now, which of the 2,000 bars in this city would you suggest we start with? Look, how much does my wife know? Who's been talking to my wife? Does she know about me playing cards? I think you better stick to the point. You better start coming up with a story we can believe. Look, I didn't kill those two guys. I didn't kill those two guys. OK. Sam. Take Mr. Barker back to the cell. Hey. Look. No, Benny never mentioned that name to me. And when my husband had a problem with somebody, usually everybody knew about it. The 
Look, I read in the papers where that Mort Barker tried to kill himself in jail. Is he still in a coma? Uh, no. No, he's not. He's, uh, he's a little better. That's good. Because I met him once at a company picnic, and he was a very nice man. And uh, you think he killed my husband, don't you, Sasha? Well, he's uh, told a lot of lies, Mrs. Cardillo. He lied to his wife, he lied to us. So far, his story is rather weak. Now, there's this other one. It's a child, 19. It's only three years older than my son. It just gets worse and worse, doesn't it? Worse and worse. Father, this is the car? Yeah, I'd have to say this is a private car. I saw on the lot. Did you park your car at Valiant Beverage the night of September 4th? No. Are you still in school? Yes. Did you ever own a 303 caliber British Enfield rifle? No. Is your car a Pontiac? Yes. Did you kill Benjamin Cardulo? No. Is your first name Stuart? Yes. Did you kill Henry Caffey? I keep telling everybody I didn't kill anybody. Just answer yes or no. No. Are you under 21? Yes. Did you dislike Cardulo? No. Did you dislike Caffey? No. Have you ever seriously intended to kill somebody? No, the idea of killing makes me sick. Just answer yes or no. No. Is he dirty, Mike? Yeah, sure, in some areas, but I can't say with any certainty that he's the one. Yeah, well, Mike, this isn't my first polygraph or my first killer. But I say, somehow or other, this flake is in it right up to his eyebrows. Well, call him as you see him, Crowley. I don't know. No motive, none. No physical evidence, just an eyewitness and to a car yet. That sounds familiar. You sound like the same person I spoke to on the phone from the DA's office. Why, they won't follow him? Hell no. Bill. I didn't say I want to date him. I just said, I don't know. Now, you call him Flaky. I call him... Uh, a little uh, Flaky. Yeah. And Needle did the Watusi when he said the killer makes him sick. He he's going to be out of jail in an hour. We'll just give him a week or two to think that maybe the fires have gone out. And if Barker doesn't pop, Pep, I think we'll send you in with this kid. Sure. You know what our boy said to me about jail? It's not bad. But you can get used to anything after a while, even living in a tree. It's another goodie from his favorite writer. Marcel Baudelaire. I just finished reading Le Vin Foy. Uh-huh. In French? No, a translation. Bill, the whole thing's about a murder. The main character keeps talking about a wind. A wind that blows toward everyone sooner or later. A cold wind, he calls it. Le Vin Foy. You know what uh, the cold wind probably stands for? <sighs> Not really, Pop. I figure it has to be death. I don't know what it all means, but it's, uh, if anything, something to think about. We've had less to go on. Yeah, we've had more, too. Like a little physical evidence. Like maybe a, a weapon, something to hand the DA. Well, we'll talk about that in the morning. You get back to sleep. Yeah, great. Good night, Bill.
<laughs> Watch out for coyotes. <laughs> Come on. Get in. Where are you going? Las Brisas. We'll take you as far as the freeway interchange. Stuart Borchers? They call you Stu? No. Why not? Does that bother you, Stu? <laughs> fifth of whiskey. The whole fifth. It's a rent. Wasted. I mean, this chick was unbelievable. I love your faded blue jeans, Stu. Mommy, bleach those for you? <laughs> hey, Stu, you have a lady? <laughs> Say, do you guys know where um, Saddleby Canyon is? Well, it's way up there in those hills. And I'm going to show you how we get there. Hey, man. When's the last time you did any drawing? Well, my last class was in high school, but sometimes I get out the old easel on layovers. Layovers? Oh, I'm an airline stewardess. Oh. Well, you really are good. I like it. Stuart, is that you? Mm -hmm. Hi, Stuart. Hi. What's your name? Tessa. Tessa, I was wondering, maybe if you had a few minutes, we could have a cup of coffee together. Well, why not? I'd love that. There's a place I know just across campus. No job, but I design album covers on the side. You do? Is there much money in this? Oh, not the companies I work for, but I'm saving. I want to go to Paris someday, study with Francois Jobin. You ever heard of him? I've flown to Paris, but I've never run into him, no. You have a car? Over on lot six. So tell me all about this French artist you want to study with. He must be fantastic, is he? Jobin? Well, he teaches at the Academy Saint-Just. Oh, wow. He is terrific. He specializes in sort of cubism. That's the stuff I like. Let me let you go off on your own. I love France. Paris is divine. Maybe you'll fly back? Maybe. I've requested it three times already. I hope you get to. Maybe we'll meet on the Boule Miche. <laughs> Place is such a dump. It's for kids. They're the only place around. Them. You know, I've always had this fantasy that, uh, well, that an experienced woman would sort of take me under her wing. Oh, the angels have wings. Ever heard that? Mm. But while we're on the subject of fantasies, uh, I'd like to hear some more of yours. Well, that's about it. I, I don't have all that many. Oh, sure you do. Everybody does. Come on. What turns you on? Well, 
I like movies. Movies? Yeah. What kind of movies? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about real life. The real thing. You don't talk much about yourself. It's a real chatterbox, isn't it? Oh, three days of this mess and your car seat seemed to be stamped on my butt. I was going to say something about that. Yeah. Do you like movies? Would you want to go? Tonight? Well, tonight's kind of bad for me. Anyway, well, I, I, I don't get that much out of movies these days anyway. Too much death and violence, don't you think? <sighs> Who am I kidding? Of course I like movies, like everybody else. But, um, well, I have this, I uh, had this boyfriend, Bill was his name, and he, he's so jealous, still, and he follows me around, hassles me, I, he even hit me, I want, I, I just want to kill him, kill him when he does that. Want another cup of coffee? It's pretty awful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, I read a book once. I can't remember the name. Um, in it, a man killed somebody, and it was described almost, um, almost sensually. Like how? Oh, the way, you know, the feel of his gun, and um, just the way everything inside him exploded every time he pulled the trigger, again and again. It was really powerful stuff. I wish I could remember it. It's, um... My mind's a blank. It was in, uh, set in the south of France, or Corsica. Uh, Le Bon Foix, The Cold Wind. Marcel Baudelaire? That's it. Right, that's the, uh, a classic, and I blank out. I read that. It's good. You read it too? French, as a matter of fact. Did you understand it in French? Mm-hmm. Wow, isn't that a coincidence? That thing with your boyfriend. Maybe you should get a gun, Tessa. Well, just to scare him, I guess, but let him see it. You know, I hear a lot of women carry them anyhow these days, you know. For self-defense. Oh, no, Bill wouldn't scare. Can't scare him. No. I couldn't buy a gun anyway. I've been busted for possession, you know. Oh. Who hasn't? Yeah, it was just a thought. How about, how about dinner tomorrow night? Maybe. Hey. Interesting. Uh-huh. But I can't tell where it's going, can you? Sure lives inside a bubble. I, uh, he's hard to get at. I, I'm trying to push him along and break through, but, uh, well, I'm open to suggestions. Good. Because, you know, it's not all that difficult to like him. I have to keep reminding myself of those two bodies, and uh, that's not good. Not good at all. <clears throat> You got a late date? Huh? Not exactly. You got anything interesting? No, two hit and runs. One uh, drunk DOA at County General. And how about this one? Two soldiers shot in the back of the head. Bodies found in a burned van. Oh, yeah? Where? In the uh, bottom of Saddle Peak Canyon. How much did I get anything? No, not a clue. Well, I'm gonna catch you later. I'm going home. Okay. Either you're a born romantic or you have ESP. This is just the kind of place I like. <laughs> well, I wish I could say that's why I picked it. It's a nice dump. <laughs> it's nicer than the other places. Yeah. And also, it's the only place that'll serve me. You know, it's funny, but I came in here. All right, get up and put your coat on. Let's go. Get out of here, Bill. Leave me alone. I've been watching you from the bar. We just start right in the kindergartens. Let's go. Don't start. You disgust me. Is that right? I disgust you, huh? 
tell you how much I disgust her. She heaves all the way to the bedroom. She's Will you stop it? Bill. Come on, get up. Let's go. Let's go. Sit down, Junior. Drink your Shirley Temple. Don't you talk to him like that. I said, sit down. Well, I'll knock you down. Oh, Stuart, I'm sorry. I better go. I'll see you at school. I'm sorry. What do you think? I don't think we even phased her. Surprise for you. Great. <laughs> what kind of surprise? Surprise. All right. You have your car here? Uh, yeah, it's in uh, lot three. Right, right here. Look the street a bit. Up here? Yeah. Right past the street, there's a red car up there. Make a left in that driveway. Tessa Baines. How Hi. do you do? Hi. You know, I was saying only this morning to Mrs. Haley that I wish the word porches were back here taking care of the lawn. Well, college is a full-time job. Mr. Haley, remember last week when I sold you the infill? Yeah. You said you'd rather have traded me the German automatic? This is where he dumped the gun, all right. We'll go in for it after they You're leave. You're up on the range, are you? Maybe you guys better go and take the back of the house just in case. So you want the uh, Walter PPK, do you? All right. Got it right here. Now. Tessa? You're the one who's going to be using this. See how it feels. Oh. I don't understand, Stuart. For protection, sir. See, there's a lot of rapes and stuff in her neighborhood, and it's bad down there, right? Right. Well, I... I don't know, Stuart. There's no problems. Mr. Haley, who's out back? Out, out back? Yeah, there's men out there. Men. Like... Like cops! <laughs> Ah! Oh. oh no, my leg! 
said he got it from a private party at the Pacific Gun Show. I had no idea it had been used in a murder. The boy's a fine, outstanding student, a good citizen. Look, so what if he was Andy Hardy, huh? You're no better than to deal guns with kids. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. It's ridiculous. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to die. You're not gonna die. I'm prepared. It's all worth it. Better than I thought. Better than I read. Did you plan it for a long time? No. No, just a few months. If I die, if I die, don't, don't let them show them, uh, show my body on TV tonight. Only if I'm alive. Will you tell them why you killed Kathy and Cardulo? And there'll be an interview with me. And I'll show them. I'll tell them. The official of the lab just called and said the Enfield checks as the murder weapon. That was quick. Well, when they know it's for Joe Styles, they give it that little extra oh, effort. Sure they do. Most people do. Hold it. Miss Barker's in there waiting for you, too. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, Miss Barker, I guess you must have heard the good news. Your husband's in the clear. I, uh, I just want to say that we're sorry for, you know, the way some of it turned out. I mean, about your husband, as far as he's concerned. Oh, um, you all look very sorry. This afternoon, Mort started hemorrhaging inside his head. Then he died. You just kept at him, didn't you? He told me in the hospital. You just kept at him and at him. We really thought your husband was... Mort was weak. A weak man. And he often made me very angry. But he would never have killed himself if you hadn't pushed him to it. Why don't you just tell me that you were just doing your job? I know that's what you're thinking. Some job. Anybody understand that man? It just doesn't seem fair. Notice that life is fair. Yeah. 